All right, NVIDIA is going for vertical integration. They unveiled their GPU, CPU, super chip called Grace Hopper after the Navy Admiral, obviously. NVIDIA Grace GPU uses 72 ARM, New York verse V2 CPU cores, whatever that means. The CPU can deliver up to 370 score on a spec crate 2017 int base, whatever that means. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with all the benchmark the tests these days. I technical is the, is the peak of humor on the show. Go ahead, no, I mean, I, Listen, if we're talking us. about Pentium chips, I could have kept up here, but I haven't it's kept up with this since the 90s. <laughs> we're talking about the Intel inside Pentium chips. Yes, I could, I did keep up with chip stuff. I'm JKL, sorry I didn't keep up with chip Infiniman. architecture. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, yeah, when we got past Gigabit, I stopped. I think what's really interesting here is this is a really important moment where like that design, that Grace Hopper design, which is basically mm -hmm. a massive system on chip. It's an entire rig. It's a GPU and CPU and memory and interconnects. This is like them going for the jugular. And this is what's crazy in a moment like this, like that is basically them trying to create an absolute monopoly. Because if you have these rigs and these rigs are the most capable for learning and you have their SDK CUDA, which is becoming the de facto software layer now that you use to write to their H100s or Grace Hopper when it's available and the A100s, that could create a level of lock-in that I think people should be thinking about. So if you're the hyperscalers like Amazon and Google and Microsoft, what is your reaction to this? If you're Facebook, what is your reaction to this? And I think it's really important because if these guys continue to innovate at this scale, you're not going to have any alternatives. And it comes, it goes back to like what Intel looked like back in the day, which is an absolute straight up monopoly, except the difference is that even when you wrote something to Intel CPUs, you could actually run it on an AMD processor and it would work with no changes. But that's not necessarily the same. So if you go from an A100 to something else, an FPGA or some other silicon, you have to translate the model. And so it's very important to understand that there's no extensibility here. So like if NVIDIA continues to drive this quickly and and continues to execute like this, it's a one and done one company monopoly in AI at the hardware layer. And I think that that people are probably thinking about how to blunt that competitive outcome. But that's what I took away from that from that announcement from them, which is like they are ready to go for the juggler here in what looks like the most important market. That's emerged in like what the do last you think decade. about the valuation, Chamath, trading at two hundred times or fifty times EBITDA or whatever? I'm in, your camp. It's I'm in your camp. The simple thing about price to equity ratios is if you take the price equity ratio and you invert it, that's your implied price yield. Price to earnings. Price to earnings. Price to earnings. Sorry, and you invert it. That's your yield, right? And so, Nvidia is yielding at these prices. I think it's somewhere like two to two and a half percent, which is less than, and it's almost half of a typical two-year bond. And so when you have a yield that that's low, you have to see it just grow absolutely massively. But there's this principle in capitalism, which is in order to grow like that, you are, you're generating so much profit that competitors look at it and say, hold on, you don't deserve mm. that much profit. I'm going to take some of that. Your profit's my opportunity. Your margin's my opportunity. I think that your margin is my opportunity is exactly what happens. So I think what I'm waiting for, Friedberg, is like in the next two quarters, if AMD, Facebook, Google, Intel. Microsoft, and Amazon don't announce something substantive, there's a very good chance that NVIDIA runs away with this. And I think that that's very problematic. But in that case, that price is cheap. My bet, though, and it's, it's a different version of your bet, but we get to the same outcome, is that I don't think that that's going to happen because it's just too important. And so I think that everybody other than NVIDIA wants vendor diversity, right? You don't want to get locked into one person, one set of hardware, great, yeah. or one cloud, you provider. know, one SDK, you don't want that nobody wants that, except NVIDIA, and NVIDIA shareholders. So my bet is in the next two quarters, you start to see some real action so that folks start to have to balance their forecasts, where it's not just 100% NVIDIA, but it's NVIDIA plus plus plus. And that's sort of what I would bet. Because it's just seems like logical and right because I, I otherwise it would it would be pretty derelict of these hyperscalers to just throw their hands in the air and just give the whole market to them and it would be derelict of AMD. The other thing that's happening is and AM, you know AMD is AMD is a great memory solution, but they really don't have a deterministic AI chip and I think that Lisa Sue needs to get needs to act decisively here and 
build something, announce something, buy something, but she needs to be really aggressive here. If you look at the language models, a lot of them are taking less and less CPU, GPU to actually build them. Uh, so this has been like a bit of a race or a competition on Hugging Face. I showed the leaderboard in another episode, uh, maybe two episodes ago, but I've been talking to some of the people who are doing these language models, Chamath, and they said there's massive inefficiency. And so... Yeah. And by the way, the other thing that Freeberg are, mentioned, J. Cal, is also happening, which is like the Freeberg, you talked about this, the atomization of these models is happening, I think, even faster than when you yes. first brought that up. Yeah. So what took two or $3 million last year is now taking $200,000 just through software improvements and code improvements. Crazy. And now they're thinking... A number of, uh, th the other thing people are coming to is because of so much, what's the term, hallucinations that people are using? Because of the hallucinations, people are making narrower models that are deeper in legal or just, you know, stack overflow, just core or just a vertical in core. They take less GPU, but they get better results because you've constrained the data set and that's resulting in, you know, better outcomes. So I think this could also be where maybe people don't need as much GPU or CPU at the same time. So many people are going after it. So that could flip where the demand could actually decrease because of software efficiencies or hitting some benchmark that's reasonable enough. What do you think, Friedberg? Look, I think as performance improves, as cost declines, like any economic model, there's a pretty nonlinear relationship with demand. So we'll find new ways to apply this technology. I think the demand's only going to go nonlinear. The other thing that's happening is people are starting to build like Mosaic ML they're building cloud independent uh, models. So you can take the same model, build it on your own proprietary personal cloud, not educate ChatGPT4, not educate Bard, but do it with your own model. And um, then you can move yeah. it from Parameter Azure. Parameter reduction and fine tuning seems to like get to the point that we can run these things on small machines cheaply, quickly. And um, it just, it'll change the, it'll change the applications. You're saying run inference cheaper, yeah. not run training. Run inference. That's right. 